Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alex. Um, I'm a third year electronic engineer studying at the University of Warwick. I'm also the founder of Warwick Tech, the team behind Warwick Hack. Um, this last year has seen a fantastic number of hackathons pop across, uh, pop across the UK and the EU. Um, didn't manage to get the EU hackathons on then. This is only the UK season, unfortunately, so apologies to you guys. Um, but it, it's been absolutely awesome. Um, I know that we've had hackers from all over the globe coming to our events. Uh, I know, shout out to Scotty for coming from all the way from Texas to our event. And I'm sure other hackathons have had hackers come from far and wide. It's, it's really been incredible. So I, I, wanted to, I want everyone to give a round of applause for all the hackers who've managed to get people from all around the world to come to their events. So. But uh, this, this also leads me on to my next point, talking about uh, all these awesome people coming from different places. Um, we, we've seen a, a huge rise in first time hackers coming to these events. And I have to apologize, because I do, I do repeat some of the stuff that Poppy said earlier. But uh, I think it's good to reiterate them and to drive them home. Um, but yeah, so my talk today is focusing about um, beginners and, and, and what we can do to make um, You can't hear me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, today is focusing on, on, on what we can do to help beginners settle into events and, and how we can make them better for them. Um, so first of all, I'm going to take you back. Take, I'm going to take you back to um, to probably a long while uh, ago for, for some of you. But um, who can remember the first line of code they wrote? Can I have a raise of hand so that anyone who can actually remember that? Okay. Well. <laughs> but uh, I, I certainly remember mine because it wasn't actually that long ago. And um, one of the things I wanted, wanted to highlight here was of those people who, who said they could actually remember the first line of code they wrote, do you remember how difficult it was working out where to start from? Can I raise your hands? Who agrees with me with that? Yeah, I remember too. It was, it was terrifying, to be perfectly honest. I sat down. Uh, fortunately, I, I was at home on my own doing this, and it wasn't too bad. I could sort of make mistakes and cock up, and it wasn't too much of an issue. But... Uh, Imagine yourself at a hackathon doing that, and that's 10 times more frightening. Um, I mean, hackathons are awesome events, and there's fantastic resources, and there's hackers to ask questions, mentors, and it's, it's a great learning environment. But um, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming in terms of what's put out in front of you. Um, I mean, you've got all of these awesome resources. You've got people to talk to. You've got challenges to start with. Um, but, but sometimes that can actually leave you more confused than where you began. Um, and this also kind of continues on to another point I was talking about, but uh, hackathons can be quite competitive environments. I can't remember who it was I was talking to earlier, but we were talking along the lines of that uh, prizes can actually cause people to be a little bit selfish, uh, which is one of the issues that beginners come across. Obviously, having no idea what to do, having never written a line of code before, that can be quite scary. Um, particularly trying to ask someone a question that you might feel is silly or a bit strange, uh, being shot down for asking something fairly straightforward. Um, and again, following that, the time constraints of a hackathon are, are pretty terrifying as well. If you want to get your questions in there and you're taking six hours just to get a web page up with hello world on it or something, um, trying to ask a hacker who's busy writing the back end for their program is not really, well, you, 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 you'd be worried they wouldn't have the time for you to ask your questions. So these are kind of all to do with points that I came across when I went to my first hackathon and how I felt when I was timid and had no idea what I was doing. Um, but now that I've run hackathons, I've been to hackathons, I still have some ideas to what we can do to improve that. But uh, yeah, so, so what, what can we do to make this better? Um, there's a couple of main points I want to drive home here. Um, first of all, I want to do, talk about how to make it easier for people to get started. Um, and I'll, I'll go into this in a little bit more detail later, but um, like the, the, the thing you need to focus on here is about as soon as that hacker works, walks through the front door, how can we make that experience good for them? Um, because it, 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 it's all about straight from the get-go. As soon as you walk through the front door, as soon as you're signed, as soon as you're sat down, um, you've never done this before. And um, I think it was, it was Tim talking about organizing hackathons uh, earlier. And it's, it's the same experience for an attendee. It's, it's, it's terrifying. You don't have no idea what you're doing. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's my, my, one of my first points. My second point was talking about integrating beginners, right? So this goes back to what I was saying about having a, a fear of approaching people, having a fear of talking to people who are more experienced than yourself and being worried that you're going to be asking silly questions. Um, what we need to do is we need to look at how we can make sure these beginners are integrated into teams. So matching them up with experienced programmers, making sure that uh, there's, no, there's no barrier there, there's no fear barrier that someone's going to shoot you down for a silly question or someone's not going to have time for you. Uh, and the final point I'm talking about is making sure this experience is positive and lasting. So after the hacker's been to that hackathon, um, making sure that they want to go to another one and another one after that. And it, it can be really inspiring. I know, I know after I came to the launch event here um, back in September last year, 
I left walking away being like, I have to run one of these. It was an awesome event, and all I could think about the next week was how are we going to do this, and when are we going to do it? And it's the same experience coming to a hackathon and attending and having an awesome experience there. It, it's all to do with that lasting effect. Right, um, so one of these points about um, keeping the focus uh, to do with keeping people busy, um, particularly for hackers who have no idea what you're doing, when you sit down and you're told, start coding, uh, the most terrifying thing is having no idea what to do. So my philosophy with this is that I think workshops are so important for beginners. Um, when we ran Warwick Hack uh, back in spring, one of the things that we drove home, uh, we, we had a little bit of a different approach. We had a beginner stream specifically for people who'd never written code before. And one thing we did with that is we kept workshops going through the whole weekend. Um, but these workshops weren't overly complicated things. We, we, we focused on fairly simple concepts. So we had a web development workshop, which is a simple uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And that was really nice because it had a visual element to it. So you could work with it, you could try something out, and then see it in front of you. Um, and the, beginners get, the feedback I got from the beginners from that was fantastic. Um, the idea that you could go away and take the skill and apply it elsewhere is something as simple as just put, putting a web page up. It, it can have lasting effects on someone who's never done something like that before. Um, so, so focusing on the basics is really essential with this. Uh, and tying into that, we had another workshop that was uh, Arduino focused. And again, Arduinos are fantastic because you can see what you've built straight in front of you right there and then. You plug in, it, plug into a breadboard, you plug, plug some LEDs in, and it, and it works right in front of you. And that's awesome. Um, and the thing as well with Arduinos is the resources are huge. You go online, you look up uh, Arduino tutorials, and there are hundreds of thousands of Arduino tutorials, and you could build anything. Um, so yeah, focus on the basics, focus on core skills, simple things that people can take away and use elsewhere. Uh, and that ties into my, my last point there. Simplicity is the key. Like, don't overcomplicate these things. You don't have to try and teach someone to become an expert coder in, the, in, in the, the first 24 hours of a hackathon. Um, you, you just want to give them some skills that they can take away and play with that spark an interest and, and, and create that excitement that hackathons should enable. Um, another point that I'm sure everyone will agree with here is hackathons, although are about coding, aren't all about coding. Uh, and your weekend shouldn't be entirely focused on writing code. Um, breaking up the weekend into mini events and challenges is, is, is a fantastic way to uh, take a break from the intensity of learning something new, uh, especially if it's the first time you've ever done it, because it can be very overwhelming. So um, mini events, mini challenges, like uh, Code in the Dark, um, Slideshow Karaoke, and Werewolf, which I'm sure are favorites of everyone here. Um, but those, th those mini games really help sort of take a break from the event and collect what you've learned, and also to, just to interact with people, to meet new people and to, to make new friends. Um, and this, again, leads on to prizes. Um, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with prizes because they can sometimes take away from events, um, particularly when uh, you don't feel like you can necessarily compete for them. And this is one of the things that, for beginners, is very challenging to deal with because obviously you want to you provide awesome incentives for people to build, th build cool things, but when you're a beginner and you feel like these things are so out of your reach, um, it can make it pretty, pretty uncomforting to try and build something to try and get to one of these prizes. Um, so yeah, ha hackathons are awesome, uh, with or without prizes. Um, I mean, I I'm not saying here don't have prizes because that's outrageous. Um, everyone loves prizes. But what you should be looking to doing is helping beginners see that the skills they're taking away, the things they're learning are prizes of their own accord. And uh, as I said, like, no knowledge is its own prize. Um, for me, the ability to, after I've been to my first hackathon, I learned so many new skills. I mean, my background is electronic engineering. Um, so I've spent my whole life pretty much working in assembly in C. And I can tell you, to be enabled to, to, to do things like sending a simple, sim, doing, just send a simple post request for me on my first hackathon, that was amazing. I was like, wow, this is so cool. I've never done anything like this before. And uh, took that away and started getting really interested in doing uh, web development. And that's something I'd never touched before. Um, but those skills, I treated like, like a prize for, my, for, my, for myself because they are something that lasts. Um, but yeah. And something else to add to that as well is if you are going to give away prizes to beginners, particularly for a beginner stream or something beginner oriented, make sure those prizes are relevant because uh, I've seen beginners go away with things like um, Oculus Rifts and other prizes they've won. Not necessarily through the, through the code they've written, but just through challenges and, and mini events. And I have to say, as a beginner, like, Sitting down trying to develop an Oculus Rift is not the easiest thing to do. Um, so I would suggest prizes that are more relevant, like Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, things that are well-documented and that you can take away and, and work on when you get, when you get home. 
uh, and also take to other hackathons. So yeah, remember, remember, remember who your audience is here when you're providing prizes. Okay, this is again sort of a little bit on the same same point I mentioned earlier, but um, that that knowledge enables people. And what we should be focusing on here is that these people have come with literally no background in coding. And what we want to do is inspire them to use their new skills we've taught them to build something awesome. So one of the things that we did with Warwick Hack last time we ran it was um, the whole first Saturday was basically spent in workshops. We had Python workshops, Arduino workshops, web development workshops, uh, and then the Sunday we let people build their own things. So it was awesome to see the showcase. I mean, I don't know if any of the MLH guys can remember, but um, Ed was one of the guys who literally never in a line of code in his life before, taken a pebble on and followed a pebble tutorial, modded it, modified it to his own accord, and basically demoed, demoed a pebble app. And that was awesome because he'd never written any code before, taken it on stage, and was brave enough to go and demo something that he thought was cool, something that he'd built from basically nothing, uh, and, and showed that off. And that was really awesome. We should be in endorsing and encouraging that kind of behavior. Um, again, I, I sort of mentioned this earlier, but uh, like, make sure your prizes are relevant. Okay, this is another thing that I'm quite passionate about. Um, so obviously, you, you have this big skill divide. So you've got beginners and you've got experienced coders. And what we want to try and do is make sure collaboration uh, really occurs here. Because one thing that's really bad, and I've seen this happen before, is isolation. And for a beginner at an event where you have no idea what you're doing, you might not know many people because you're not part of the community yet, you've only just arrived, your first hackathon, um, you could be working on something uh, very basic. Um, and someone next to you would be sat next to working with an Oculus Rift. And this could be quite, quite scary because you're like, well, I'm so out of my depth here. This is terrifying. Um, and what we can do to, to, to sort of alleviate that is um, actually run things like adopt a hacker. Um, so with teams that are missing a member, for example, or not, um, try, and, try and provide some sort of incentive to actually take on someone who's never written any code before and onto your team, so beginners and whatnot. Um, because the best way to learn is to get stuck in. I mean, okay, you're not going to be building some crazy system using a mile or whatever, but um, to be able to do the, the, the front end for a website, that's not overly complicated. And if you've been running workshops on how to do that kind of thing, um, it's, it's a great lead on. Um, so encourage, encourage knowledge sharing. It's really important. This leads me on to something that I've actually been working on myself. Um, it's quite funny, this, because uh, when Swift announced it on, uh, on Saturday, I kind of started building some of the systems to do that already, but this has actually saved me a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Um, I've been working on a, a client-side tool for actually enabling organizers to make these resources available to beginners. Um, so the idea is it's going to be a hub for things like um, simplification of challenges and prizes, so they'll all be in one place on a web app. Um, and if you're a beginner, you can navigate there, and then you can sort of see your progress. If you think you finished one, you can tick it off, and it'll track your, your progress. Uh, a collected hub of resources. So for example, say you don't know where to get started with Python, it'll direct you towards a, an editor, uh, show you what, um, uh, if you're working in a different language, show you what, what compiler to download, and, and a host of resources to get started with. Uh, as well as that, it can also help enable team management. So obviously a big issue, how you get to hackathons, you have teams of three, and maybe you're missing a fourth person, you're an individual, how do I find that team? Well, hopefully I'm gonna try and alleviate that problem with a team management tool as well. I mean. I'm going off and posting all these features here. I'm not going to say it's all finished yet because I've only just started working on it. Um, but the idea is if we can get this in the hands of organizers, hopefully we can sort of get to a starting point for beginners and, and, and make that whole process a lot easier. But, uh, I'll show you quickly. Oh, no, that's next slide. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you about where this idea originally came from. Um, this stems back to when I go into my first hackathon and um, some of my feelings and emotions from there. I mean, I have to say, um, I did love my first hackathon, and I got a huge kick out of going to it, but I felt completely confused and completely overwhelmed for about the first three, four hours. I had no idea what I was doing. My background, C, assembly, and there's people building things with tools that were not in my forte at all. I had no idea what they were doing. I had no idea how to use them. Um, and for me, that was, that was I, I just had this feeling of uselessness. I, I joined a team, and all I could really do was uh, some simple front-end stuff. And my, my contribution to the team really didn't feel like it had an impact. Um, so what I wanted to do was sort of provide a tool with this hack organizer uh, project uh, to ease people into that flow. And I'm going to show you now quickly what we originally created for Warwick Hack, because um, that was sort of a pre-release to, to the initial idea. Um, this is what it looked like originally. Um, it was static, broken, uh, and a complete mess, to be brutally honest. 
Um, but it sort of did the job. And um, I have to say, we, we, the feedback we got from it was fantastic. And it, it, that's what spurred me on to go ahead and try and start working on this organizer tool, was that um, beginners could work out who the sponsors were. They could see the mentors at the event. Um, they knew where to start from with a, with a selection of resources. Uh, and they had access to all the stuff to get in contact with us. They had access to the schedule and whatnot. And, um, and they got a real kick out of being able to find out where everything was in one place. Um, so I sort of adapted this to a, a new tool, which is a bit more snazzy. Uh, and it's, it's now dynamic instead of being just statically served web pages, which is obviously better for us all. Um, but the idea is that we're going to be packaging this up, um, getting this onto a GitHub repository and open sourcing this for everyone to be able to access and use and spin off their own versions of. Um, so right now, uh, it is very bare bones. Uh, the repository is currently private. Um, my code is horrific. Um, but hopefully, in about a month or so, I'll have something to actually put public. And um, I'm not sure how I'm going to share this or how to get out the word out to people, but I'll be posting on probably the uh, Hackers by Hackers group and some other forums to try and get the message out that this is now open. I'll be taking um, uh, pull requests, and I, and I want people to actually commit to this project as well. I want everyone's input. I don't want it to just be my project. I want the community to work on this as well, because um, we all have our own takes on, on, on different ways of doing things. It'd be really great to see everyone's input. But uh, yeah, so the, the project's going to be built with a Python backend. Um, we have this big discussion about this, because uh, my, my teammate who's working on this is a, is a diehard Pyth um, PHP guy. And uh, <laughs> that yeah, I don't really need to say much more than that, do I? Um, so I managed to convince him to uh, to go down the Python route, trying to make it easier for everyone to actually work on. Um, I mean, I'm going to put my hand up here and say I'm a .NET developer as well, so that's going to get more booze. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, we went with Python to try and make it more accessible for everyone else to work on. Um, we're now also using the new MLH API, which is quite entertaining because I've had to basically rewrite all these slides overnight yesterday. Um, thanks, Swift, for uh, making my life a lot easier. <laughs> um, so that's been that's fantastic, and I actually started playing with that already, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's also going to be a, a walkthrough set up for organizers. So when you, when you build your event up and you want to try and work out what your tool's going to do, um, it'll sort of step by step guide you through how to put up your resources, uh, how to link your sponsors, how to how to put up your mentors, and how to show them all off as well. So not only is it a tool for attendees, it's also going to walk through new organizers as to how to set up the hackathon and the best way of providing their content to their audience. Um, so where to next with this? Um, as I said, the uh, the plan is to get this up and running sort of in a month or two. Um, we're going to test this at Warwick Hack. We're going to try and get it out and see, see the response from our attendees, see if it's successful. Um, we want to get your feedback. Um, so I'm going to take questions at the end of this and sort of see if anyone has any, anything to add to it, anything that we could, we could integrate into it. Um, we want to get your input in as well. So we want you to be building as well as us. So if you can help commit to the project, it would be fantastic. Uh, and then we want to get the, the tool into the hands of organizers. So hopefully by spring season, we should see people using this and, uh, and making use of it, which would be fantastic. But uh, yeah, so just to reiterate and to cover back what I've said, I'm going to go over the last couple of points that I made. So for beginners, the most important thing to do, keep them busy, keep them focused. Workshops, mini games, integration, they're all important things, but you've got to keep people busy because they have no idea what they're doing. And when you get to a hackathon and, and you're, you're, you're lost for what to do, workshops help drive focus. Um, and I have to say, being sat there with people working around you, having things to do and knowing what they're doing, it's kind of scary when you sat there like, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel so awkward here. Um, yeah, keep people busy. And take a break from coding as well, because the whole weekend is just about having fun. And uh, if you're sat there for 24 hours writing code the, the whole time, it can get pretty tiresome. Um, and it's, it's a good way as well to sort of take a step back and come back to something new again. So you can collate your knowledge from workshops and whatnot with taking a break and coming back to something with a fresh mind. Uh, and integrate hackers. Joining teams and, uh, and meeting experienced people is the best way to, to learn how to code. Um, I mean, for, for myself, when I started getting integrated in a project, I mean, oh, is it? Uh, it's Poppy here somewhere. No, she's not. Um, but she'll remember from Hack Landing, uh, I learned a whole range of new skills that I'd never done before. Um, and, and that, for me, was awesome, because Jack, who was there as well from Brumhack, he showed me so many things that I'd never worked with before. I mean, I had done very little database stuff. It's not really something I ever come across. Um, but he was showing me how to, how to do all of that, and that was awesome because I learned so much, came away from it feeling really empowered. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I really have to say, and uh, thank you. Um, and I hope I can get some feedback on on what I've spoken about. Thank you very much, Alex. Does anyone have any questions for Alex? Wonderful. Okay, with that, give Alex. One. Oh, over here. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see a question.
Um, how do you find it as someone coming from a different discipline coming into hackathons? Um, I'd have to say it was, it was definitely challenging at first. Uh, I mean, I spend most of my days buried in looking at PCB schematics, looking at um, specifications for whatever hardware I'm working on, and then to come into the whole world of, of computer science. Uh, I know there's a lot of overlap, but it opened up so many doors for me. And I have to say, like, I came to university thinking, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish as an as electronic engineer and graduate doing this, uh, and it's been a complete career switch. I'm, I'm now a software developer through and through. Like, sorry to any of the engineers out there if there are any, but uh, I've been converted by hackathons. Hackathons changed my life, as Swift said the other day. It, it's been amazing, and uh, the community is fantastic as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Another round of applause for him, please.